Hello, and welcome to a Fallout 76 episode. Today I'm going to show you how to build and blueprint a fort and bring it into nuclear winter mode. Now, you can build in nuclear winter mode, but you can't blueprint yet. So, you have to build in blueprint in adventure mode first, blueprint it, and then you can drop it in nuclear winter mode. Now, you don't have everything available to you. But when you do get to nuclear winter mode, uh, you do not need any supplies whatsoever. It is unlimited. So you can build with as much wood, steel, and concrete as you want. But I wanted to build a fort first so it's a lot easier to drop in. So this is a test, a test build actually. I'm not even sure that this will drop in nuclear winter mode. So let's head in. We're past the loading screens, and I'm just going to pick a rather unpopular area down here. And in a second or two, I'll see how many other players are going to spawn next to me. Hopefully it's not a giant horde, because then I have to run. So we're just waiting to see. Three, two, one... And it looks like there's just one player there, and the rest are clustered at the cow creamery. Camp McClintock. I should be pretty good. So here we are in nuclear winter mode, and obviously I'm right on the edge of the circle, which means I have to run into the circle and drop my camp down in there. So I know that in the next three minutes, 20 seconds or so, as the circle gets smaller, I will be safe to drop the camp within that zone. So I spotted this little cluster of train cars. And... Yes, it worked. And it doesn't look like I lost any components. I tried to just keep it to the main build things. The steel, the wood, the concrete. Actually, I don't think the concrete made it to this one. I wasn't sure about that. So it's just a claustrophobic kind of maze without any doors yet. I'm still working on the design. So I was a little bit outside the circle. I just want to step back and have a look. It placed pretty well. Now I haven't bothered to put a roof on it yet. I may add a second story. I did have some problems getting it to blueprint when it gets too large. But I did find this really good location and I think I'm going to drop my camp here every time. I was going to get this large, sorry, medium supply box when I ended up with the chameleon mutation. So instead of staying away from the radiation areas, it's best to head into them, and now I have the chameleon mutation for the entire match. And gosh, we're already down to 34 people left in the upper right corner. It's counting down how long until that circle moves in. I just want to check this one last train car. I also want to find something besides this Gatling gun. It is very heavy and very slow. And without marsupial, it's tough to get into these little spaces. So hopefully I'll find a replacement. Laser pistol, perfect. We'll just hang on to the Gatling gun for now. I have no armor, so if unarmored. Okay, so that's good. And everything is equipped naturally as soon as you have it, so if you did pick up wood armor or scout armor, it naturally would be added. You do not have to equip it. It picks up the very last one that you find in a stash crate or off a dead body. So I'm just within the zone but I want to get a little further in so I can practice quickly dropping the camp, setting it up, and getting inside. 
I do these exercises kind of by myself just so I can see how quickly I can do it and what I can find. Okay, the large circle is moving in, so I know I'm in the safe zone. And oh, there's another crate. So these are scattered all over the place in small, medium, and large sizes. And that's exactly what I wanted, a submachine gun instead of this giant hulk of metal. There we go, dropped. Make room for some other things. I'm gonna head for that little clearing over there. Checking your map often really helps you kind of determine where you are and where the ring of fire is going to consume you. Okay, that was nice and quick. So now I want to take the time to show you what is available in the build menu in unlimited quantity. I'm sure there is a limit to how much you can actually build, but I mean, you do not have to take supplies in with you. You don't have to take wood and concrete and steel. It's all provided. So here are your traditional floor options are still available. Walls are all the same that I had in adventure mode, all four types. It's kind of interesting, the ones at the very bottom, the powered keypad doors. I think I may try putting one of those, power it up, and have a keypad at the bottom of the fort for my team so only we can get in. And if somebody comes by, we can turn the power off, and then they have no other way to get in. Obviously, if I had more space, I could fit the larger concrete barriers, but at least it lets me put down the smaller ones. There it's showing generators and fusion generators. Seems to be all the basic lighting, lanterns. All of that is still available. Water, I don't know why. Okay, here's one of the bigger tests I really wanted to try. Is if they're allowing us to build beds, nope, we cannot use them to re-up our health. So I thought, okay, if the sleeping bag didn't work, let's try an actual bed. And also a no. So you're pretty restricted here in nuclear winter mode. Okay, chairs are fine. But can I use a musical instrument chair and get well tuned? That also has to be done inside Vault 51 before you gear up and head out. Let me see where I am on the map now. I'm going to be consumed. So I need to run inside the other circle and set the camp up again. Because there's the edge of the storm right now. You can see there's a flag to the east that shows me I have about 60 feet before I enter a safe zone. Off to my right, I know there's an enemy. Now your creatures can be killed quite easily. I keep forgetting you can vats creatures, but you cannot vats other players. Okay, so we have scout armor. And then I completely forgot to remove it so I could have the chameleon mutation. Okay, so there's about 20 people left. I just have to get all the way back over to Blueprints. Drop the fort or camp. And as you can see from that, you get perk cards for building defensive structures, barriers, drop your camp. So if you want to ramp up your character and build up the XP and get bonuses, uh, definitely take the time to do some building solo. Just drop on a quiet spot on the map, drop your camp a few times, drop a few barriers, and you'll be okay. So it seemed to be pretty central in this location. I had no idea I'd be within the top 11 people. Whoops, eight. We're down to the final eight. 
Looks like Commander Fox just killed three or four people. So I'm just going to drop a few more concrete barriers in here. I do not play PvP, so this is a kind of heart-pounding experience for me. I have no idea how many people will be left. We're down to six right now. I just want to move some of these barriers, but it just wants me to scrap these right now. I want to make a clear path to the doorway, even though I kind of failed, but that's okay. I'm going to redesign this entire fort. I've got some better ideas. I heard footsteps, so I just gave them a little warning. I'll send out some love. And they sent a grenade. And here comes an extra crispy Scorch Beast. Oh, I was close. That was really a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I wish I'd got a hit on the extra crispy Scorch Beast. I ended up placing fourth and I gained 452 XP. And you can see some of the upcoming rewards. Uh, looks like more perk cards and probably a photo frame. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. I had a lot of fun building. I'm going to go back to the drawing board. So I'll see you again with another camp build in Nuclear Winter. Thanks for watching and see you out in the world. <laughs>